Hi, in this video, you will see how Citrix Cloud Native Stack embraces GitOps to provide API delivery and security use cases with its API Gateway product. Citrix Cloud Native Stack is purpose-built to integrate seamlessly into Kubernetes environment. And the rise of GitOps comes from industry's increased adoption of Kubernetes. Let's look at the content of this uh, video today. We will start with what is GitOp. Then we will talk about APIs and how we can use our API gateway function with Citrix ADC using GitOp patterns along with architectural deep tie and follow up with the workflow and the demo. So what is GitOps? GitOps is an operational framework that uses DevOps best practices like version control, code review, automation. GitOps also uses Git repository as the single source of truth for infrastructure definition. Infrastructure as code is the practice of keeping all infrastructure configuration stored as code. Having infrastructure's desired state described as code allows you to deploy the same service over and over again, multiple times. So what else do uh, DevOps best practices involve? The merge requests, right? So GitOps uses merge request as the change mechanism for all infrastructure and application update. That is any change to infrastructure and our application is described as a code. And GitOps automates the infrastructure update using a Git workflow with continuous integration, continuous delivery. When the new code is merged, the CI CD pipeline enacts the change to the environment. So in summary, GitOps is when the infrastructure and our application state is fully represented by content of Git repository. Any changes to the Git repo is reflected in the corresponding state of associated infra and application through automation. So let's look at the industry's GitOps pattern, right? To achieve a full GitOps install, a continuous integration platform is required. So Jenkins, uh, Bitbucket pipelines are some of the popular pipeline tools that are complementary to GitOps. These pipelines automate and bridge the gap between the Git pull request and the orchestration system. Once the pipeline hooks are established and triggered from pull request, commands are executed to the orchestrating piece. A new pattern has emerged. A new pattern or component that is specifically introduced with GitOp is this GitOp operator, which is a mechanism that sits between the pipeline and the orchestration system. A pull request starts the pipeline that then triggers the operator the operator examines the state of the repo and the start of orchestration and syncs them. The operator is the magic component of this GitOps. So next, next let's look over the API patterns, right? An API is all about the resource and the interaction. A resource can have all or some of the basic operation that allows a client to interact with it. A client can create, replace, update, delete, and retrieve a resource. All these operations are defined by mapping to HTTP verbs like get, post, put, etc. And this is basically a resource oriented operations, right? Resource and basic operations. In resource oriented APIs, the resources are the named entities and the resource names are their identifier. As you can see in the example I'm showing here, a slash product or a slash product 42 corresponds to a resource uh, for which you are asking as access. So one also needs a way of listing, pagination, sorting the path and which is done through API parameters. Like what I'm showing over here, you can see slash product question map, uh, category equal to monitoring or using sort using something like slash product sort, right? And also version control is very important. 
So all the above pattern is specified is something called as open API specification, which provides a standardization. And the API specification has all the HTTP verbs, the path for the APIs, etc. So now let's look at what Citrix ADC does, right? So Citrix ADC has been solving this problem um, of API gateways with various custom resource definitions, uh, custom resource uh, definitions are consumed by the developers and the DevOps and Citrix cloud native stack takes advantages of uh, Kubernetes CRDs to provide a declarative configuration workflow that is idiomatic to Kubernetes, right? So we have all these CRDs. So for example, to get to the resource, we have this layer seven HTTP route CRD. Uh, also, if you need things like transformation, URL transformation, you can use rewrite CRD. And if you want to respond um, of, with an action, you can use a responder CRD. You can add security to it uh, using fun uh, CRDs for rate limiting or authentication CRDs, JWT based uh, authentication or OAuth for authn and authz functions. We also support advanced uh, security with web application firewall and bot management. For integrating with GitHub patterns, we are gonna stitch all of these CRDs together based on the OPI, API, open API specification files and policy template. So here is the workflow. Developer is responsible for creating, modifying, changing the APIs and he does so by updating his open API specification file in the Git repo, which is picked by a Citrix controller and used to configure the Citrix API gateway. The operation team, so the DevOps team or a DevSecOps team is responsible for taking this API to production and will specify policies, templates, and map to the API. To summarize the workflow, the DevOps will configure the API gateway and create templates and map it to the endpoints. Developers will develop application and use API spec for API definition. Let's look at a high level architecture of Citrix cloud native stack uh, in, in this GitOps world. So we added to our Citrix ingress controller something called as a Git watch, uh, which basically watches for the changes in the Git and adds API gateway CRD, which consists of open API interpreter, which looks at API methods, pattern, and then invokes the CRD in the backend to configure the API gateway. So now let's dive into the demo. So before I do the live demo, let me orient you to the demo setup. I have already deployed Citrix Ingress Controller along with the API Gateway CRD. And I have already set, set up Git Watcher to watch the Git repo. I have also specified open API spec file in the repo. In this demo, I'll be using petstore.yaml and playstore.yaml for open API specification file. I will show you the API gateway CRD specification. Once I get to the terminal, we will see how the configuration is done to access the Git repo and also to look for files, the Swagger definition or open API specification file. Also, I have pre-created some policy templates, for example, the rewrite template or various rate limiting template like rate limiting fast, rate limiting slow, authentication template and web application firewall template and I have applied it. What you will see in this is the workflow from developer when he deploys or adds a new API to his Swagger specification file. We will generate appropriate configuration based on the policy template defined and the API definition from the developer to the API gateway. All the CRDs and configuration are automatically generated and configured to Citrix API. So let's look at the process of adding the new API.
So now that I'm showing my terminal, uh, this is the CRD definition uh, for API Gateway. This is how uh, I have configured Git Watcher. As you can see, I am specifying the path to my Git repo, uh, the branch where it resides, and of course the username password to access those. Um, along with that, uh, I am specifying the, the Swagger definition file, as you can see, as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide the petstore.yaml and the playstore.yaml and also the configuration about uh, the ADC um, uh, IP address along the way to access it. And you can see here, I also defined a bunch of policies like policy P1, P2, P1 policy says use um, rate limit GitOp slow for anything which starts with slash pet. My policy P2 uh, is for any any API which starts with slash user. Not only that, uh, API pattern as a selector, we could use tags. Again, these tags are also defined um, in the Swagger definition file. Um, for example, I'll, let me show you the Swagger file, which is Play Store. So if you can see this Swagger definition file, I have a section called tag and I have mentioned a tag called play over here. So you, you see that uh, I have already, uh, this already has some API definition like play and play in. So let's try to access those and make sure we can access those and it has been configured. So this is the play. I'm gonna make sure I can access play in. So you can see that I can access all of these because I have configured uh, on that on, on the end in the Swagger file, it is already defined. So now let's go through a process of defining an API say called play out. Okay, so just to make sure that it is not there. So I'm just gonna click it as you can see, um, there is no play out defined over here. So let me go to my Swagger file. This is the Swagger file. Uh, I'm just gonna mimic the play in for the demo. So I'm gonna copy these uh, definitions over here. There you go. And I'm gonna call it, say, a play out. Okay. And I'm gonna save this Swagger definition file. Um, you can see, let me go back to the terminal and try to access. Of course, I cannot access because I have not yet committed it to the source code. So let me go ahead and do that. As you can see, I'm adding this play out. This is my Git. I'm just gonna say added play out. Let me do a commit, right? So now I'm gonna push it to the source code and let it take its time. So it's going into the source code. Now I have published it. So now let's try to access this play out, right? So now you can see that I just added an API and you could pretty much um, access it, right? Uh, I just defined the playout API and you, you and all the policies and everything took into effect. Now that I showed you how a developer can just uh, define APIs in the Swagger definition file and Citrix API Gateway can automatically pick it up and configure. Let's see from the operation perspective if uh, you know there is a high level policy change which you need to make. So let's, let's take a look at uh, the the playout API again. So as you can see here, my real path is prefix URL v2 play playout. So that what I will do is I will go and change it to I'll modify that URL. So for that I will change the template, which is re, re uh, rewrite crd prefix URL dot yaml. So I'm going to go in here. So instead of saying prefix, I'll just just for this demo I'll say modify prefix URL, HTTP URL, right? So I'm just gonna save this. So I'm just gonna save this and I'm gonna apply. Apply minus F, rewrite prefix and my GitOps namespace. Okay, so there you go. Now let's go back to the application. So, so now you can see that prefix URL that modify uh, has been added. So that concludes the demo. Uh, thanks for watching.